What's up guys? I've been playing this new game on mobile Android that is called Top Heroes. It is currently in early access and I've been having a lot of fun and the game gives you quite a bit of rewards and is very generous in its pity system and everything like that. It is a gotcha game. It's super fun. I guarantee that if you download it and you like these types of create your own army using hero games that you're really going to enjoy it. So with that being said, I wanted to make a video of my top 10 tips for Top Hero. So let's get it started with tip number one. Tip number one, I would say most important for free to play players, especially is go ahead and do your adventure and 100% all of the areas. There's a lot of free items such as recruit tickets, gems, and gear essence that you can find along the way. While it can be annoying to chop down trees, what you can do is just AFK next to a group of trees and just go make yourself some food, go watch a show that you like. Maybe whenever you wake up in the morning, you can go set it up, sit next to some trees and then take a shower or something this will allow you to just afk farm the trees they respond pretty quickly and you can just blow through and progress at your own speed without having to consistently chop down trees mid run the reason that i say to do this is not only are you going to be getting the story quest rewards you're going to be getting the chests that you find around the map you're going to be getting villagers that can help your production but you can also finish achievements which achievements are going to allow you to get more gems and while each achievement only grants you five gems once you complete an entire achievement board, then you'll get an additional 100 gems just for completing everything. All right, with that being said, let's move on to tip number two. With tip number two, I want to say that you should level up all of your heroes to at least 50, if not higher. When leveling up and ascending your heroes, you get a permanent boost to all of your teams. All of your units get these boosts. It's super important, and I feel like a lot of people don't notice it. You might have a character sitting at level one. You might as well just ascend them just a little bit in order to get these boosts. Current Currently, I have a 59% boost to all of my attacks and a 88% boost to all of my HP just because I've ascended all of my heroes to at least 70. Now for free to play players this can be a little rough but I have on screen the amount of essence it takes to get to specific levels and you can kind of judge for yourself where the cutoff might be but for level 20 it's obviously free but you don't get any bonus until you've ascended at least once. In order to get that first ascension it costs 30 and that lets you hit a max level of 30. For the next boost, it's going to cost 50, and that's going to let you get a max level of 50. Once you ascend again, it's going to cost 100, allowing you for a max level of 70. After that, it's going to cost 200, allowing for a max level of 90, and then it will cost 350, allowing for a max level of 100, 500 for a max level of 110, 700 for a max level of 120, and a 1000 for a max level of 130. Now, there is levels beyond this. I have not hit this yet. My assumption is it's either going to be 1250 for 140 or 1500 for 140 and then if it is that 1250 then it's probably going to be about 1500 for 150 or it could even be upwards of 2000 for 150 that's a lot of essence it's really rough to get i'm not exactly sure what it's going to cost but i feel like everybody should be able to get to at least that ascension of 50 essence if not 100 so those permanent boosts are going to be huge when calculating everything from arena adventure literally everything everything that you do in the game it just gives permanent boosts to all of your heroes if you're looking for more boosts that's what leads us to tip number three now this is something that is going to help you out as you progress later in the game once you've acquired a couple legendary heroes you can actually team them up together in order to get same type boosts whenever doing arena queues literally anything as long as you have the same type heroes you'll be getting these boosts for having four legends of the same faction you're going to get a 15 percent boost to both HP and attack for having five legends of the same faction you're going to be getting 25 percent to both hp and attack and finally for using six legends of the same faction you're going to be getting a whopping 35 percent boost to both hp and attack that's a huge boost so especially once you hit arena especially once you start queuing for really high level stuff that 35 percent is going to be absolutely ginormous and especially you're going to be clapping people in arena for those who do not have that boost in my opinion 
opinion, the easiest to acquire is League characters, but I will do a breakdown on screen of what each faction's numbers are so that you can know exactly. Keep in mind, this is only legendary heroes. This does not apply for epic heroes. This does not apply for rare heroes. It is only legendary heroes. Tip number four. This one is, I think, probably the most important tip on this list, and it is very important for you guys to know this. So, when you recruit in this game, you are allowed four options. Now, it's going to randomly roll it, and keep in mind, rare heroes are going to be what you get the most, then epics, then legendaries. Just because there are four heroes in your tavern, it does not mean it's a 25% chance to get any of them. They still keep their obtain rate, even if you've rolled them into your tavern. Now, it is vital that you do not continue your rolls unless there is a legend. I will say there are specific epics that it could be worth trying to roll a couple times, but it's never going to be worth to use eight tickets to get an epic character, and here's why. When you continue your tavern rolls, it does not actually work towards your pity, so you can end up spending eight tickets and only move your pity up one. It would be way better to move your pity up eight with eight individual wishes in order to get closer to that legend. When rolling, rares are going to be the most common, so even if you want to upgrade your rare heroes, you're still going to be getting them very often and you're not going to have to worry about getting additional character just because you want to roll the tavern again. For rare characters, never continue. For epics, there are specific ones, which I'll be making another video that is a tier list of all the characters so you can check that out to see which ones are more worth, such as Knight or I think Brawler is also pretty good. Now, what happens when you do finally roll that legend? Now, that leads us to tip number five. When you are a 19 out of 20 tickets and really if you want to be safe anytime you are rolling characters you should have eight or more wishes on you at a time now the reason for this is before pity if you are 19 out of 20 100 percent have eight wishes now the reason for this is in order to guarantee the legendary character you're going to have to use eight tickets it costs one for the first roll one for your second re-roll two for your third re-roll and four to guarantee the fourth unit in there it is a 2.5% chance to get a legend if you are not on pity, so feel free to recruit at your own risk, but guarantee that you have those 8 tickets when rolling the tavern, because the worst feeling you can possibly have is roll 1 ticket, and then maybe you have to spend all of your gems in order to get that legendary hero, or potentially you just miss out on the legendary hero. It feels really bad, and I just highly suggest make sure you have 8 or more tickets when wishing almost 100% of the time. Tip number six you can set up auto rally in your guild so while you are offline if you have a team available you can actually set up auto rally in order to join boss raids this is incredibly useful especially for early game because you're not going to be mining resources around the map as consistently and these bosses are going to give you a lot of essence especially for early game keep in mind this tip is less valuable for guilds that are super active as it takes 20 seconds for you to join an auto rally and so so if your guild is super active, then they're going to be joining those rallies instantly and your auto is not going to be joining as long as people are consistently paying attention. You can help your guild members out by leveling up your rally hall and this is going to allow more people to rally with you. So that allows for some of these people that might not have been able to join before to join and it's also going to make beating bosses and such easier because more people can rally with you. Alright, tip number 7. Rubies are insanely important. Insane important and should be farmed almost 24 7 if you are one of those people that gets on the app every four or so hours to make sure you are keeping your stuff up, that is amazing. You guys are doing a great job. For those of you who are not, I understand maybe you're busy, but if you want to be semi-competitive or keep up with this game, you should be logging on every four to five hours in order to redo your ruby camps. So, in the map, there are specific areas that allow you to farm stone, ruby, and wood. Ruby and stone are going to be the two most important things that you can get because that is going to allow you to upgrade your queues it's going to upgrade your army it's going to be the most important wood is still important you're going to want wood but it's not as important as stone in my opinion now as soon as you can hit level three level four ruby mines i consistently think you should be hitting those ruby mines at all times if you only have one team it could be better for you if you want essence to join auto rallies and 
just not let your team do anything. However, if your clan is not super active or if you need rubies, I highly suggest you continuously farm for those rubies. Early game, it's not going to feel like you need that much, but I guarantee T you, you are going to need hundreds, if not millions, of rubies in this game. I'm getting to the point where some of my upgrades are costing 5k rubies alone, and I can loot about 1k to 1.5k on a 1q. So that's six hours of me farming rubies. And while my research isn't that high yet, and it will get better as I progress in the game, it's still a lot of time for these ruby costs. Please make sure to farm your rubies and stone prioritizing rubies that is going to move us on to tip number eight so this is something that you will learn as you progress in the game you unlock an arena in the game and this is a pvp function where you can get pretty good rewards with a few buildings gems and recruit tickets now in order to maximize your gains you can actually continuously attack an arena obviously until you run out of tickets and then you should claim your ranked rewards if you claim them before let's say you're rank eight you claim them you get off the top of my head like 17 arena tokens and then you use five ten attacks you move up to rank three and then you could have claimed it you could have gotten like 10 maybe even 15 more rewards if you just waited until after you did your arena in order to claim your tickets make sure to use your daily arena tickets before you claim your arena rewards that moves us on to tip number nine research 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 now I wish I knew off the top of my head when you get the research station. I want to say, I think it's based on your progression in adventure mode. Once you get to about 6-3 in adventure mode, I think you actually unlock it. And I might be crazy. I should have looked this up, but there's not a lot of information online. And it's been so long since I've unlocked the research station. But I made the mistake of never doing research until I was almost done with adventure mode. I had so much time that I lost researching because this stuff is so valuable now a few things that you can get out of doing your research is your team can become stronger you can increase your gathering speed you can power up your military you can get faction bonuses but it can be a little overwhelming at the start so i just want to give you guys a couple things to level up first first getting your first queue to unlock all six members is going to be huge you want at least one queue that is super strong and you should focus on one queue and not branch out into each different queue second letting you promote your lower level armies as you progress in the game and you upgrade your army stations all of your army heroes are going to stay at the level that you train them at but you could unlock the promote your lower level armies in the research station allowing you to basically move a portion of your lower level army into the next level and the next level and the next level until all of your army is the same level it's super helpful and super annoying whenever you can't do it because then you'll just run out of army spaces as you progress later in the game because your team will take your strongest army and your lower level level army is just never going to die. It's just going to stay there. Also, as you progress after you get the promote level, lower level army and you unlock that six member in queue, increasing your gathering speed and load size. So this is what I've done with my first queue. My first queue can carry three to four times as much as all of my other queues because I've increased my load to maximum on the first research. So I'm bringing back a lot more rubies, a lot more stone anytime I'm doing those expeditions in order to get more resources. We are going to be moving on to tip number 10. Level up and train your armies same faction that you use. So, I mentioned earlier, your heroes can be of the same faction, and so if you have primarily one faction in your team, you should be leveling up and training that army the most. Now, of course, you want to keep everything rounded, you want to be leveling up everything, but as you progress in the game, obviously things are going to cost a lot, it's going to be hard to keep everything rounded, so just make sure that whatever army you're using, like personally, I use the League faction. I have five members of League in all of my stuff. So I want to grind league. I want to make sure that my league train facility is the highest possible thing that it can be. And I can maybe let my horde or my nature suffer a little bit in order to make sure that my league is as powerful as it possibly can be. All right, guys. So those were my 10 tips 
Now I realized I actually misnumbered my tips and I ended up writing 11 tips. So the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with is just make sure you're reading the character abilities. There's over 30 heroes in this game and they each do different things and they can bond together super well in order to get teams that just roll super well. Not only are you going to want to keep the same factions, but... There's characters like Pathfinder, which he burns with a lot of his skills. And then there's the character Pyromancer, who gets increased damage with her passive whenever she's attacking a burned target. Now, the Pyromancer burns herself, but that skill only has so much time that it's going to be burning. So having two units on your team that burn allow the Pyromancer to take advantage of her passive a lot more. Little things like that are going to be what sets you guys above the rest of the players who are playing this game. And I highly suggest reading all the character abilities anyways if you guys enjoyed that video i really hope you guys leave a like comment down below and check out top heroes on android devices it is currently in beta so while there are some bugs i currently think it is the best game on the market right now for what it's worth so feel free to check it out i'll see you guys later